Without question, this is the number one retirement planning mistake people make, without question, and financial planning as a whole, too. So I'm dealing with the guy today, husband and wife, and uh, the guy uh, basically took care of his uncle for the last eight years of the uncle's life. Uh, the uncle had a, a girlfriend who was, what, 15, 20 years his junior, and uh, she saw him once a week for eight years, and uh, when he died, she got two-thirds of the estate. Uh, <laughs> And I guarantee uh, the uncle's wife, who predeceased her, predeceased him, was none too happy for that. Uh, so because he he just his estate plan got messed up by a uh, a lady who got involved there. Now, is there anything the 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 kid out the guy I was working with the uncle's nephew could have done? No. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is this is a situation that happens all too common. And there's more to it than this, just this. And we're going to talk about it here today, too. But if you don't have your estate, and I tell you, I say 90 to 95% of the people I talk to, inefficient state of plan, state of plan. They haven't even thought about it. Spend a lot of time and energy looking at their investments. Should they be 55, 45, or 60, 40? But they don't completely, they're, they're ignorant about estate planning. So I want to share with you something here. We're going to look up Winifred Gardella. All right, there's a story behind this. All right, Winifred Gardella. All right, so who is old Winifred? Winifred, I should say. And here's from the Santa uh, Clara, or Santa Cruz Sentinel, dateline September 21st, 1951. And that was in their 96th year, isn't that nuts? All right, so we're going to see here. Um, here is Winifred Gardella suffered. Little Winifred Gardella suffers polio attack. She, uh, uh, let's see, the child has a moderate involvement of the left leg, says Dr. Lear. She became ill for the first time yesterday, her physician was uh, reported, and was diagnosed and taken to the hospital that night. Uh, Children's Hospital in San Francisco was told there were no beds available. Oh my goodness, flatten the curve, flatten the curve. It was hoped accommodations could be obtained tomorrow or Sunday at the local hospital. Uh, this is the sixth case of polio in the county this year. Dr. Lear said there was two other cases, but they're not considered local cases because the victims were residents of other counties. All right. Anyway, so let's see. So that's that's an interesting thing. That's little Winifred Gardell at 1951. So hang tight for just a second. I'll show you who, what happened. There was actually a uh, on the March of Dimes campaign against polio. Um, vaccinate your family now against polio. Interesting, huh? And so here she is, Winifred, too, in her crutches right there. And, the, and, the, and this is... Um, again, again, the case against polio. Uh, polio poster girl. Uh, I can't see what that says below. Polio poster girl walks again. All right, so there's Miss Winifred. All right, so let's keep going. Now, that, that's interesting to me because, uh, actually, let me just share the story of what happened with Winifred. It's very interesting um, <laughs> uh, right here. Uh, in, the, in the early 1950s, she was the poster child for the March of Dimes. Her picture was published in the newspapers to raise huge sums of, money for the mar sums of money for the March of Dimes in San Francisco. Nationally, her image raised millions of dollars to help fight the dreaded crippler polio. Her sad, innocent face and her tiny body supported on crutches and leg braces, and many Americans reached into their pockets to donate. But the March of Dimes couldn't help Winifred. After two and a half years under their doctor's expert cares, her parents were told there was no hope. Despite this dire prediction, her grandparents were determined to find a cure, and they were not able to accept the opinion of so-called medical experts. They decided to see a chiropractor. In less than six months of having her nerve interference corrected, she was threw away her crutches and walked again. And she's been walking ever since. That was interesting to me. So I said, well, whatever happened to Winifred? I said, I'd, that'd be interesting to see. So I went to newspapers.com. And I, we're going to go here and I typed in. So there she is, Miss Winifred Gardella. And then we're going to keep going and we're going to go to California because that's where she reside. California. We're going to go boink and we're going to hit this guy right here. And we're going to go 1950s on. 1950 through 2000. And there's, there's a reason I'm sharing all this with you, by the way. Uh, so we see 1951, tiny Winifred uh, Cardell, Gardell, we already talked about it. Here's the, uh, the advertisement for the chiropractor, all right? Um, Dr. Baumaster Health Chats, incurable polio cases respond to new drugless uh, treatments, and that would be the chiropractor. So whether or not that's legit, I don't know. Frankly, it doesn't matter, because here we go. 
Here's Winifred. Isn't this interesting? 1966, the same lazy, uh, which uh, Rod Rodolfo Juntado of Santa Cruz lost control of his car coming down Seacliff Drive in Rio del Mar and crashed too fast into an embankment. With him were 16-year-old Winifred Gardella. So she's hanging out with a guy seven years her senior. All victims were taken to the county hospital. The girls were treated and released. So uh, she was obviously able to walk. Interesting, because it seemed like she would not be able to walk before, but she obviously was able. All right, then we're going to go in here, and you're going to see it stops. It stops. We've got 1951. We already did 1951. We've got 1985, uh, and we're going to say, well, what, that was a long, from 1966 to 1985, and we got a court case with her, uh, not a court case, a public notice, I should say, of property taxes. And then we find she's married to one David Alexander. All right, so now we know her. That's why we can't find anything more in Win, uh, Winifred Gardella because it's now David uh, Winifred Alexandra. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in Winifred G. Alexander. And this is Alexander. And this is interesting. So we're going to go to Winifred Alexander and we're going to find a whole bunch of other stuff. Ah, interesting. So we're going to go to 1996. We're going to go down here to 1992, Santa Cruz Sentinel. Same paper that we saw for Little Winifred. And we're going to see this little thing right here. Notice of a petition to administer the estate of Mary L. Gardella. All right. A petition has been filed by Winifred Alexander. That's her. Uh, to be appointed that she, as a personal representative, to minister the estate of the decedent. Isn't that interesting? So, again, we found Winifred is being appointed uh, to administer the estate of Mary L. Gardella. I was like, well, who is Mary L.? So now we want to go back and say, was Mary L. her mom? I don't know. So we're going to find out. Winifred, and we'll see. Winifred Gardella, just to kind of come back here and see, was Mary her mom? Don't know because there's, I tell you, there's a method to the madness, my friends. Hang in there with me. And I don't know if it's her aunt, her mom, so we're going to find out right here. Daughter of Miss Joseph G, so it just says Miss Joseph D. So I don't know who her mom is, but anyway, I'm assuming that's her mom. I'm assuming her mom died and she became the minister. Um, we're going to go back to Alexander. Alexander. Or it might be an end. I don't know. But we see that Winifred have filed a petition. And apparently she must have been granted to be the estate executrix. Executrix, a woman who files an estate lien. Want to get them? Because now we got Winifred is being sued. Winifred G. Alexander and David Alexander are being sued by plaintiff Joe G. Gardella and Rustine. Isn't that interesting? Um, it doesn't say why they're being sued. just says they're being sued because they're the defendants of the why. Of the estate, for sure. That's in 1994. Oh, go forward here a little bit, shall we? In 1996, they're being sued again by members Justine and Joe G. Now she's being sued by Brenda Scott. Who's Brenda Scott? I don't know. I didn't take the time to research it. But anyway, the Missile uh, Court for the state of California, uh, I guarantee they're suing because she was the executrix of the estate and they did not like how the money was div divvied up. Uh, let's see. We already did that one. Here's June 16th, 1996. Being sued again. This is three times, my friends. Three times. Now she's being sued by Brenda Scott again. All right. I don't know if that's a different case. I don't know how it works. All right. Hold on a second. There's three suits right there. And then we got 1993. It looks like she's being sued again. Fourth time for being the executrix of the estate of Mary G. It looks like. No, it's the defendant. Look at that. Again, they're being sued by Joe G. and Rustine. I don't know how that works. I don't know what's going on. I just see a lot of lawsuits coming down. And you can see it goes to 1988. Uh, I'm sorry, 1993. Uh, or talking about that. 1996. Um, isn't that interesting, though? So lots of lawsuits. Um, the interesting thing about Miss uh, Winifred is that, well, if we'll see right here, I want to see if I can't show you the one that I found was pretty interesting right here. Right here, 1986, she was running for the, uh, she was appointed as a secretary or an advisor, co-chairman for the, uh, whatever, Santa Cruz County, Santa Cruz County, for the Duke Mai Gian campaign. And I think if he was, memory serves, he was governor, I think. And she was uh, co-chairman for the county, as well as Donald Driscoll, a Watsonville strawberry grower. Driscoll strawberries. Anyone seen them in your store? I guarantee you have. They had some recalls here uh, not too long ago. All right, so you can see what's going on with Winifred. So she's uh, very active in Republican policy, politics. So she obviously was able to walk. 
All right, so then we got Winifred G. Alexander. I haven't even looked at this one yet here. We got uh, Recall the Santa Cruz 3. We deserve better. And she was on the board of something to recall the United, to recall the Santa Cruz 3. And, uh, the, and this probably is around Prop 11. Was it Prop 11, Prop 12 there? I don't know. So it's interesting, the career of Winifred. Um, I'm sure she's a nice lady. You know, she hung around with a guy, got uh, got caught up in something with an older man for sure. And then she was very active in the Republican Party. 1988, she would look like she was on, um, let's see here, uh, county. She was a district uh, to be elected for the county central committee. So she wasn't confined to crutches and braces on her legs, that's for sure. All right, so that's pretty cool. But she was being sued because she was the executrix of an estate that obviously wasn't state set up correctly. And going back to the beginning of this video, my man, his, his uncle, had uh, inherently left too much money to the, his girlfriend because he's up there in age. His girlfriend is 20 years his junior, 15, 20 years his junior. And uh, unfortunately for, for the whole family, uh, she was able to, let's just put it this way, name herself as beneficiaries on various accounts and whatnot. Estate planning, my friends, get it done, get it done, make sure it's done, and make sure your money goes to whom you want, not what the court says. And if not, you're going to leave your executor, executrix, a hassle like what happened to Winifred. On a side note, remember they said they couldn't cure polio? Well, we don't necessarily know we're curing polio, but certainly there's alternative medications or help ways to deal with the ills that affect us today. So just following the medical monopoly might not be your best advice. All right, I'll leave it to you to think about that. We'll see you.